Buckle your seatbelts as we launch into cyberspace for an insider's look at the secret world of Toy Story. The art of animation went to infinity and beyond with Toy Story, the world's first completely computer-generated movie. Whoa! With an all-star cast of voice talent headed by Tom Hanks and Tim Allen, and a score by Grammy winner Randy Newman, the film became the number one box office champion of 1995 and won a special Academy Award. These guys are professionals. They're the best. Toy Story also represents an amazing breakthrough in the way movies are made. When the Walt Disney Studio joined creative forces with the computer pioneers at Pixar, they didn't just make a movie, they made history. Draw! Until now, feature animation meant hand-drawn cartoons, shot one frame at a time. But instead of using traditional ink and paint, Toy Story's 27 animators gave their characters life by moving three-dimensional images created inside a computer. Look, we're all very impressed with Andy's new toy. From there, state-of-the-art computers build the geometric shapes into lifelike puppets before rendering them with color, texture, and shadows. I think the word you're searching for is Space Ranger. Director John Lasseter and his computer artists and scientists spent four years designing everything you see. Every character, house, and car, down to each of the 1.2 million leaves on the trees in Andy's neighborhood. In fact, the more you know about how it was made, you'll never be able to watch Toy Story the same way again. It wasn't just computer magic that made Toy Story such a success. It was the heart and spirit of fun that the filmmakers put into the characters and story. Every animator in his heart is a toy nut. Every animator is a child at heart, and I think you have to be to be in this medium. And so you walk around Pixar, you walk around Disney for that matter, and it's like every desk practically is filled with toys. The best toys of all were the computer programs they invented to put high-tech graphics into the hands of cartoon animators. I remember the moment when I first saw com computer animation of any kind. Um, I was working at Disney as an animator on Mickey's Christmas Carol. And very, two very close friends of mine were working on Tron. And the moment I saw it, it was like, this is it. This is, this is the next step, the next plateau. This is the future. Tron was the first feature film to explore computer graphics. Set inside a video game, the environments, vehicles, and special effects were all computer-generated imagery. Walt Disney Feature Animation continued utilizing computer-assisted animation to create elaborate three-dimensional architecture, like the ballroom in Beauty and the Beast. The massive stampede in The Lion King is another good example of how computer-generated models can be combined with hand-drawn characters for a spectacular effect. Back in 1990, Disney teamed with the high-tech innovators at Pixar to invent a computer-assisted production system. The CAPS process revolutionized the way animation is colored and layered. First showcased in The Rescuers Down Under, it's been used on every Disney animated feature since. Meanwhile, Lasseter and the artists at Pixar were also inventing new techniques for making character-based movies by computer. Their four experimental short films were unlike anything audiences had ever seen. All of them focused on character animation. That was the key. You know, to me, that is the important thing to what we do, is that we create characters. In Tin Toy, I first started developing this notion of a juxtaposition with the audience. It's where you can show them something that they are so familiar with. And then all of a sudden you make them look at it from a, point of, a different point of view. Looking at a cute little baby from a toy's perspective. Now from a toy, that's a monster. Tin Toy was the first computer animated film to ever win an Oscar as the best animated short of 1989. Its success fueled their dreams of creating a full-length movie by computer. We were uh, inspired from Tin Toy with the ideas that we had developed in there of toys being alive and thought there's a tremendous potential here that we could tap into. So when we came up with the uh, idea for the buddy picture uh, with two toys instead of two humans. In their original idea for Toy 
story, Tinny the Tin Toy is accidentally left behind at a highway rest stop. Desperate to get home, he befriends an old ventriloquist dummy. They hit the road together and find a kind of toy heaven at a preschool where they'll never get lost or outgrown. Early on, it became obvious that Tinny was too old-fashioned to be a child's favorite toy, so Tinny was out, and a brand new high-tech action figure was in. The goal was to make Buzz the toy that any boy would just die to have. He's I, I probably made out of shiny steel and plastic bubbles, and he's, he moves and flies, he's got wings, and it's, 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 it's a new tech toy versus a, a one that should be discarded. In contrast, the ventriloquist dummy began to evolve into an old-fashioned cowboy ragdoll named Woody Pride. He's a classic piece of Americana. He's a piece of American folklore and arts and crafts. He's the old-fashioned, western, loose-limbed marionette without the strings. Early character models were created and put through their paces. For a while, the undersized spaceman was called Lunar Larry, and later, Tempest from Morph. Toy Story was off and running. By June of 1992, it was time for a screen test to see if the toys would be believable on the big screen. Hi, pal, what you doing? I'm Tempest from Morph! Yeah, yeah, what's his butt? Say, you weren't thinking of flying, were you? Well... You know Andy loves toys that can fly. Really? Well then, to infinity and beyond! You know, Andy loves toys that he can find. These tests proved the technology would work, even though the early Woody seemed a bit mean-spirited to his rival. As for the cute little roly-poly spaceman, he needed more stature. So to bolster his appeal, they decided to open the movie with a cartoon version of the Buzz Lightyear TV show. You will die, Buzz Lightyear! Not today, Zerg. As much as everyone loved the Buzz Lightyear cartoon, it wasn't the right way to start the movie. It was so impressive, how could they hope to convince an audience that the old cowboy doll could be Andy's favorite toy? So the idea was abandoned and never completed. This assembly of storyboard drawings is all that remains. To infinity and beyond! Don't miss the next exciting episode of Buzz Lightyear, Defender of the Universe. Wow, Buzz Lightyear. What a cool show. You must die, Buzz Lightyear. Not today, Zerg. Restructuring the story to get the right emotional beat meant going back to the drawing board, or in this case, the storyboard. So this is the sequence where Woody and Buzz first meet. As with every Disney animated film, writers and storyboard artists start by creating comic book-like drawings that describe the action shot by shot. Then he comes to life. So would you see that as more of a tilt up or like an actual? Comic? I think I think if, if you take rising. the yeah and move the camera up, then you change the perspective. For months, the creative team kicked around different ideas to revise and improve the characters, humor, and story structure. 25,000 cartoon panels later, their final script would bring them an Oscar nomination. As the story took shape, it came time to cast the voices that would breathe personality into the toys. From the start, they had only one actor in mind for the voice of Woody. What they did was they took a, they took a, a line from Turner and Hooch, which was a movie I'd made for Disney, and they actually did have a small piece of computer animation, which was Woody saying the line. And they had, boy, Woody was just in, he was just in hysterics. His little fists were like pounding all over the place. He dropped down to his knees and was pounding the ground. It was, it was kind of amazing. Oh, no, 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 you're eating the car! Don't eat the car! I got the car! Oh, you stupid! It fit, you know, if I had come in and seen something that didn't make quite as much sense, I don't know if I'd be doing the movie, but I saw, I saw Woody and he talked like I did, so it all made perfect sense. The perfect touch for the voice of deluded space toy Buzz Lightyear was provided by Home Improvement star Tim Allen. Toy Story is essentially, of course, a movie about a spaceman from a far off galaxy, but he doesn't realize he's a toy. So he comes to it in this little boy's world thinking that he is Buzz Lightyear, 
You are a toy! You are a sad, strange little man, and you have my pity. Farewell. I, I've enjoyed it because I've always loved movie. I've always loved animated films. I've always wondered how the voices get done, and now that I know how they're done, I will never, ever do one of these again. No, 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 go, go, just go. I'll, I'll catch up. I was actually acting in there a little bit. There's a whole bunch of. You hated it, though. It's very interesting because in the beginning, Buzz Lightyear was much more superhero-like, much more Dudley Do Right. And when we start getting Tim in for the recording sessions, he was putting a spin on it that was much more realistic. So we evolved the character, and it's much better to where he is just like a cop. Watch yourself. Bob, who goes there? Do you know these life forms? Yes. They're Andy's toys. All right, everyone, you're clear to come up. focused on each toy and looked at the toy, studied the toy, thought about how it was manufactured with quality of plastic, whether it was a cheap toy, whether it was an expensive toy, all these things, and combined these together to draw the personality out of it. You know, um, Rex. How are you doing, Rex? He's a Tyrannosaurus Rex, the most fearsome meat-eating creature ever to walk the earth. But have you seen those pathetic arms that the toys Tyrannosaurus Rexes have? He can't even scratch his nose. So how fearsome can he be? And so for the Tyrannosaurus Rex, we got Wally Shawn to play him. But what if Andy gets another dinosaur? A mean one, I'll get replaced. I just don't think I can take that kind of rejection. Mr. Potato Head, his facial features fall off. And that's where his personality comes from. I mean, I think you would be mad at the world if your face kept falling off all day. And so uh, Don Rickles was a natural choice. Personally, I think it's casting of the century. Hey, look, I'm Picasso. Yeah, I don't get it. You uncultured swine. What are you looking at, you hockey puck? Wait, let me find the moment. Oh, uh, we have a slinky dog, which is uh, Jim Varney. I think I got it. Wow. <laughs> Golly, Bob Addy. Oh, shut up. Ham sits up on the shelf and looks out the window all day. And so he's like a Mr. Know-it-all. And of course, who better to play it than John Ratzenberger from Cheers, who plays Cliff the Mailman. Yeah, uh, uh, this is it, Spuds. I'm sure there's not another piggy bank. I mean, what are the odds? <laughs> yes, sir, we're next month's garage sale fodder for sure. Andy's mother is um, Lori Metcalf. Where was the last it's place It's like the classic right here mother. In the van. Well, you're just not looking hard enough. Oh, don't worry, honey. I'm sure we'll find Woody and Buzz before we leave tomorrow. We have a little Bo Peep um, ceramic lamp, and we have Andy Potts play that. Don't let it get to you, Woody. I know Andy's excited about Buzz, but you know, he'll always have a special place for you. I mean, I'm trying so hard to be a lamp, you know. Um, Feel that. Feel that. God, all those years in acting school. It's really hard. I, it's much harder than I ever anticipated it would be. You have to essentially act full bore, 100%, standing there uh, with headphones on your, your head. All right. Okay, so the setup okay. of this is you're, you're on kind of a little podium. Yeah. Right. This is where you I'm totally in the hands of the directors and the writers on this thing. I'm, I'm completely given over to their impetus is what they need. All right, listen, 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 listen. No one's getting replaced. Now, this you do every line probably 17 about. times. What? No, no, listen, no one's getting replaced. This is Andy we're talking about. All those 17 ways different. Listen, hey, 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 hey. No one's getting replaced. Hey, listen, no one's getting replaced. This is Andy we're talking about. But the end result is you run the gamut from A to Z on whatever the emotion, the emotion. Like today, I said the word no. I did a riff on just saying no. And I said no every conceivable way. No, 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 no.